Hi people of YouTube, I am back today for another video and today I thought that as I was trying to get together my top 2020 books of 2020, I started to see that there's a difference for me between my top series of 2020 and my top standalone books of 2020. So I decided to separate them into two different videos and today my video is going to be on my top 10 series of 2020. And so these are not in any particular order and I'm just going to go through them. I'm not going to go through too much detail about each book. However, I am going to give you just a little bit of a synopsis so you can see those. And these are books that were not necessarily published in 2020, but they're books that were new to me that I read in 2020 and that I found to be outstanding and I wanted to share them with you. Okay, to start with, and I have my little list here, my notes. But to start with, I wanted to talk about the Captive Prince series. Um, this is a trilogy. And this book is amazing in that it starts off with the prince of a particular realm being kidnapped and abducted and sold into slavery. So it's a world in which there are slaves, there are sexual slaves, and they are not treated with respect. The two different kingdoms, Damon comes from one kingdom and Prince Laurent comes from a different kingdom, and how they treat their slaves and how the tr slaves are trained is very, very different you start to have lots of compassion and you start to understand that they are from warring kingdoms. But there is this underlying um, steam that occurs between Damon and Laurent and it develops over time. And it is a compelling story of political intrigue and court and gossip and deception and lies and political maneuvering and you know gambits that you are relying on to try to understand who did what under what circumstances and who do you trust and who do you believe and it just was fast paced quick moving really um, kept me interested pulled into the story and definitely made me feel a part of this world so I couldn't put this down I loved this story so so much so if this if you're a Game of Thrones fan this is up your alley and definitely for you. Okay, so in other stories or other videos, you've heard me talk about Gabriel's Inferno by Sylvia Reynard, and I absolutely loved Gabriel's intensity. I loved the forbiddenness of the student teacher relationship with Julia. I loved their past history in terms of, you know, him not remembering her. I love the parallelisms that were drawn between Dante and the study of Dante and their love of all things Florence and I felt transformed, not transformed, but I felt like I was transmuted into that world. I love the passion that he held for her. I love the struggle that they went through to get together. I loved you know, the whole series in terms of how it ended. I even love the Passion Flicks movie, which I typically don't appreciate and like when they do a, you know, recreation of a book. But they did such a great job. And if you love epic love stories and you love, you know, people having to go through um, their pain and their demons to discover who they are, to be a better version of themselves, then you absolutely will love this story. So please try Gabriel's Inferno by Sylvia Reynard. Um, next on my list is Beautiful Disaster by Jamie McGuire. I know that there's lots of controversy around the author and her own p political beliefs. I'm not gonna comment on that. What I am gonna comment on is that this story and Travis Maddox and the Maddox family and the Maddox brothers and the this beautiful disaster um, focuses on Abby and Travis and th that's the first introduction that you get into this world but then as you continue on with the beautiful series each book um, is about another brother and their significant other so each book sort of ends and you get a resolution at the end but then you get to see the side characters and introduction of other um, people or other characters, family members in the story so you get to see how they fare and what, what's going on with them so you get to develop over years with them. So I absolutely dove headfirst into this um, series, loved it and felt 
Abby's pain and Travis's pain and wanted you rooted for them and wanted them to, to get it together. Um, Travis is a part of a fight club that was started by another one of his brothers and there's a little bit of um, some mystery and um, disaster things that happen that make you feel for all the characters but love them nonetheless. Beautiful disaster, another phenomenal story. And along the same lines, I Lauren Rose, the Morgan Brothers series, and I kind of got the same, the Morgan Brothers and the Maddox Brothers and Beautiful Disaster give me the same feel in that they are a tight-knit, close family. I picked Captain, Captain Oh My Captain, because I love this book so much. Um, and, you know, the Morgan Brothers are, you've got the older brothers, and then you end with Rockstar, the youngest brother, and... They pass secrets a lot, secrets amongst each other in terms of how to date and what to do to woo a girl. The older brothers kind of figure stuff out. They have their own methods of certain things that they teach the younger brothers that they app, that they use as well. Um, for those of you who read this series, Ball Peen Hammer, I so love that story um, because how can you not? You just are. His personality is infectious. But Captain, I feel like he goes through. An emotional transition to be with the significant other in this story and you know you're there with him because he's misunderstood and there's so much and I know that it's a trope and it drives the plot line when there is a, um, a misunderstanding and one character thinks one thing and the other character is like no that's not it but they don't communicate and you just go like if you guys would just talk to each other you guys could get on the same page because they so were on the same page in the very beginning of the story and then it all fell apart so anyway, I love Captain so much. Morgan Brothers, like, get on board with this. I still have to follow the Reed Rivers trilogy. Haven't read those yet, but I heard those are amazing as well. So Lauren Rowe and, uh, is, did an amazing job with that. And the narration in the audiobook, spot on, really, really good. Now this next series just has a place in my heart. I have said this before, um, Karen Cole, any, I've read all her books, anything that she writes, I have hands down decided I will read. I just picked Asher because this one was Asher, this is a rock star romance, it, the first book is Storm. Storm you find that they, you know, he, this girl is, you know, going to a work event, she is um, on the road in a snowstorm, her car breaks down, he picks her up. These are like tattooed, long-haired rocker guys. He picks her up. They um, wind up having to spend the weekend in his truck because they're stranded and with him and his dog, and the story just takes place from there. And you learn so much about these characters. And again, close family, um, rock stars, musicians go through a lot. This story is Asher's. When you get to um, Asher's story and find out what happened with Asher and Ember and how the band came about and what he goes through for her and what he's not willing to give up and how long it takes for him to get his um, HEA is profound. And I love this story so, so, so much. And if you haven't read this, please get on the Carrie Ann Cole train because she is a phenomenal writer and she knows how to write, you know, epic, epic, epic love stories that people work for and they ultimately, you root for them and when they get it, they get their HEA, you're like, they so deserve it. So Next this is, an amazing is The Paper Princess. Um, this is the Royal Series. Um, again, another, this is a high school bully rom romance in that um, the main character, Ella, is living alone. She, um, there was a, her mom died, and so she's left alone. She doesn't want to go into the foster care system, so she tries to keep it secret. Callum Royal comes along, friends of the family. He comes along and he rescues her and he brings her home. And it's sort of a rags to riches story. He brings her home and she is to live with him and his five sons. And his five sons are hell yens. And they start to bully her right off the bat because they're like, who the heck are you? And you're here as a gold digger and we don't know you and like whatever. And you start to hear their story. And once this book ends and it comes together and then you get to hear the um, companion novels, absolutely love this story it is a really really good story and I wish that the story was continuing so you could hear their twins in this story and um, and the two twins are the youngest 
and you are constantly like, what is going on with those twins? And what are the twins doing with that chick? And what's going on? So there's a lot there that I'd love to see fleshed out. So I don't know if she's going to continue with the story. But again, high school bully romance, amazing. I chose Lothair for Immortals After Dark by Cressley Cole, Sweet and Bruin. Whew! Immortals After Dark. Cressley Cole knows how to write sexy time like no other author I have ever read. Her sexy time is just amazing, but she also knows how to develop a story and she she knows how to write a story where you start Lothair in Immortals After Dark. This is not book one, but this is the one I chose to talk about. He is a bad guy and throughout there's a build up throughout all the books where Lothair appears and you're like this dude is bad. How is she going to redeem him and how is she going to how is he going to get a happily ever after and how am I going to like him and how am I going to be able to respect him? Well, she does it. And you know, Lothair falls in love with this uh woman whom he believes is his mate but it's a sorceress that has taken over the body of this southern kind of trailer park kind of chick and Lothair is convinced that his fated mate is the sorceress that's within and the story develops and and from there you start to find out what really is going on and she redeems him and Lothair I really really love and I hope I don't know if she's done with this series. It doesn't seem like the way that it ended. There is more to come with the Valkyrie. But Paranormal Romance, this hands down for me, is one of the best. Cressley Cole did an amazing job with this. And if you haven't read Immortals After Dark, come out of the shadows and get yourself a Cressley Cole book and read it. You will thank me. Please. And do it in the comments below. Okay. For those of you who know me, Anna Todd's After Series is what got me hooked on romance This novel. story is absolutely my hands down favorite romance novel because it just speaks to perseverance, working together, being honest, facing your demons, you know, I love, there's like one part in here where Landon, who Landon is Tessa's best friend and Harden's uh, stepbrother. And Landon is like, you two need to figure out your stuff, get it together because you are dragging everybody else down with you because their epic romance is so tumultuous and so conflicted that the people that love them and want to support them because they know that they're tortured, broken souls, especially Harden, and Tessa tries to save him, and Tessa needs to figure out that she can't save him, that she needs to take care of herself and let Harden figure out Harden, and Harden is so self-destructive because of everything that he's gone through and all the lies that his parents told and, you know, um, the drug abuse and the alcoholism, and he's got to get that worked out. And Landon is like, you guys got to get it figured out because this is damaging to everybody else. So if you haven't read After, read it, read it again. I can't speak enough. This book is amazing. The whole series is absolutely amazing. It takes you on a ride. You're on the edge of your seat. You're rooting for them. You want them to figure it out. And I just love them so much together. The movies, psh, crap. Totally awful. I'm so disappointed because they could have done so much better because this book is epic. The series is epic. Okay, my next one is, you know, it's always a good time with Kennedy Ryan. I brought up this one, Flo, because Flo, absolutely, you have to read Flo first in order to understand Grip and Still. If you do not, this is their beginning. It happens, I think, like 10 years prior to... Um, Grip. Grip is a up-and-coming rapper. He is friends with um, Bristol's, Bristol Gray's brother, who is also an artist. Read their story as well. I really start with their story. Um, the brother, is his story, and a heap, and down to my soul. Read those because it's nice because those characters make cameos in this, in this story. And so, um, Grip is really good friends with the brother. And he goes, the brother asks, Bristol's brother asks him, Grip, to go to the airport and pick up Bristol. And he spends a day with her. And it's epic and it's amazing and it is 
everything that he's looking for, but she thinks that he's a player. And so she is like not buying his nonsense. But he's not being a player with her, he's being honest, but she doesn't know that. So they spend 10 years in a big misunderstanding and when they finally get it together, oh my God, the book is, it makes you laugh. It makes you, I mean, I was sobbing and still, their story is absolutely epic. They work for it, they deserve it. It's an interracial couple. It's a beautiful, beautiful story. If you haven't read it, please get on, get on the train. Next is Corrupt, um, the Devil's Night series. Penelope Douglas, I've read all of her stuff. I absolutely love her. Um, if you haven't heard about this, it's all over booktube. Everybody's talking about it. Corrupt was my first introduction to dark romance. You know, there's something that happens in the story between Rika, um, Erica, they call her Rika, and Michael, and, and the other, you know, the other four guys, Kai and Will and all of them. And they blame Rika for it. They think that she's the cause of it and the mystery unfolds through all of the books. And it is a an amazing story of friendship and history and you know, you have to have a timeline. Penelope Douglas put a timeline out so you can see when all of these things, because there's a lot of back and forth, so stuff that's happening now versus what happened previously, and then you start the story starts to unfold through all of the books and all of the characters. You should binge on them, read them together, because you really will get the best experience when you get through Kill Switch and when you get through Nightfall and then the most recent the most recent one, which is Fire Night, I think. Um I can't remember. I have it somewhere over there. But read them all together. Again, you're going to love the whole gang for um, in, in this story. All four of the guys. They're amazing. Damon is my absolute favorite. I love Damon's relationship with Will. It's really... And I love the relationship that they have with all of their significant others. And then how that came to be and what they went through. But this is the beginning. This is the start of it. It's absolutely outstanding. Can't speak enough for it. My next, I'm going to go pretty quickly, is the um, Dark Hunter series. I just pulled a random book off the shelf. This is Sherilyn Kenyon. The Dark Hunter series, again, is another paranormal romance. You've got, um, she brings in Greek mythology because you've got um, Artemis, and she is the god goddess of all the Dark Hunters, and you've got Asheron and his brother Styx, and all of the various stories that go into, each book is, a, is an, um, you know, it comes to a conclusion, but there's a backstory behind. For those of you who love Simi, Simi is, you know, um, a demon that has been assigned to Asheron, and she is amazing, and she loves everything in barbecue sauce. So you laugh, you cry. The whole series, when you immerse yourself in this world, is absolutely outstanding. You understand what they're fighting for. In order for them to become a dark hunter, they've had something tragic and horrible happen in their lives, and they die, and when they die, their soul screams out for vengeance. And when they scream out for vengeance, Artemis is the one who responds and answers and recruits them into the Dark Hunter army. And when they become part of the Dark Hunter army, then they're fighting against the vampires and against other gods in this epic battle and epic war. And it's just phenomenal. And it's got romance and intrigue and friendship and connection and love. And it's awesome. And the last one that I have to talk about today is um, Jody Ellen Malpass's This Man series. Much like Gabriel in Gabriel's Infernal, Jesse is an intense, intense lover.